are we going, everybody? Had a great day yesterday on 3AW Radio talking all about gardening. And a lot of emails and phone calls were coming in about fruit trees in particular. What's going on with them? Some people complaining that the trees are flowering, not setting fruit they did in the years before. Or last year, no fruit at all. Uh, but let's take it back to basics, okay? So every tree will have a different cycle in its flowering stage. If we were to talk about nectarines, peaches, that'd be the earlier ones, your apricots, uh, also early. Almonds would be the first ones to start off. So I'm working my way back right to the beginning. Almonds are the first pretty much to flower and fruit, followed by apricots, nectarine, peaches. But then you start getting into your plums, which are also pretty close with your nectarine and peach. And then you start getting into your pears and apples. Now here we've got a, uh, this is a pear tree. You see how it's pushing up the buds now? It's, it's starting to uh, come out into full bloom while well, they're showing a bit of color, the white. There are lots of buds on this one. I'm excited about this because we get a lot of them. But to this side here, well, to your left here, this is an ashy pear, nothing at all yet, still asleep right next to each other. So you can't say it's the soil conditions or the microclimates, it's the tree itself, the species of trees will vary in their cycle. Here we go, there it is, little burst just there, spotting it now. Now, in the, in the background here is the apricot tree. Now this is the one I showed you a couple of weeks ago, I think. It started to produce apricots. It, I've never seen an apricot in four years. I pruned it really hard last year, and there we are. I mean, there's one, two, three. We haven't got a, a hundred of them, but we've got at least a dozen, maybe two dozen on this tree scattered all over it, which is good. It's a good sign. It's coming back to life. And we work our way down to this corner here, peach and nectarine trees. This is in full flower now. Now, if you've been following me over the last six months, seven months at least, uh, when it comes to uh, leaf curl, because that's what affects these trees heavily, this has been sprayed every month on the dot, the beginning of every month on the dot, except for now because we've got the flowers, uh, for leaf curl control. So we're using our disease control pack, which is what stops these leaves from curling. And you know what I'm excited about? The fact that we have got leaves coming out now, and I know in the past, even at this stage here, they were blistering. So they were starting to curl and twist and deform. Now, if I, I, I am really, honestly, I'm excited. This will be the first year in the four years that I've actually got uh, control of this tree because I never did practice that regime of spraying it every month from the first sign of leaf fall in autumn all the way through to the point where it's about to bloom now. So looking at it all over, I haven't missed a spot on this tree and fingers crossed as soon as the flower set we'll give it another spray and we won't get a single deformed leaf. Look at this, look how clean this tree is. Followed by this leaf curl is also aphids so a healthy plant has its own self-defense mechanism and ability to protect itself from disease and insect. So as soon as your plant becomes slightly diseased, or you know, not diseased, um, tired or weak, um, malnourished, uh, lack of water, all those, uh, they all add to the problems occurring on the tree for being attacked. It puts out a distress signal and it gets bombarded by viruses and disease. In the background here, this is another pear tree. Um, I'm just trying to, this is, that's Bo Bosk. I think this is Williams. I keep confusing him. I haven't got labels on him. Once we see the fruit, we'll know what we're talking about. But the fact is that last year we only had one or two fruit on this, maybe six, I reckon. Um, but, you know, bad and little. The lichen's all over it. We've got more sunlight coming into the middle. I'm not too concerned about it. I may scrape it off. I mean, we'll see how we go before, you know, yes and no. Look, I've left it for well, many years. I've got plenty of trees with the same problem. It's not a major issue. Um, if the tree becomes really tired looking, this was tired looking because it needed a hard prune. Now we've got a nice shape to it. Look at the healthy growth coming out. So no fruit on these because these will cut back down to, to a couple of buds. But all the, all the fruit bearing uh, buds here, the spurs that we've got, they're doing really well. Look, multiple flowers, dozens on each one. It's going to be ridiculous. It's not going to set them all obviously, but it's a good sign that we have got that. And we're going to develop it with the rest of them. So about to burst out flowering. That's about to burst out, that's set fruit, that's about to set fruit. We've got different cycles, another Nashi pear. Here, this is the other one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six trees in this little courtyard. This one is pushing on quicker than the one in the background there. So both, you know, Hoshui and Koshui, two different Nashi pears. One complements the other for cross-pollinating. This is coming on already. So that's another thing to factor in when it comes to setting fruit. Cold weather. So we've plummeted down to 12 degrees, and it might be about seven at the moment out here. 
cold weather will affect, affect the longevity of the flower. So if it's in full bloom now and you get a cold snap, it can knock the flower out. Luckily this area is protected. If these were out in the open, like my orchard, and we'll go there another day, that would probably affect them more so because the high winds are coming through. So they can, they lose their flower life, lifespan that is. Second to that, dehydration. Now we've had a good burst of rain. Uh, next to that is if you've got a cross pollinator, you may have, like I've got, I've got here, Hoshui and Koshui. This, if this flower's too early, before that comes into bloom, we're not going to get the pollinating, cross-pollinating to, to occur. So you need the male and female, let's call it that, um, that helps each other to set fruit. So you need both trees to flower almost at the same time, preferably at the same time, but not completely different cycles. So one finishes and the other one starts. It misses the whole pollinating cycle, which is what we need to happen so the fruit can set fruit. Or the tree can set fruit. So these trees are, are going to have their cycles. Hopefully those, these two will flower at the same time. If you are having problems like that with your trees and they're not flowering at the same time, you can push it on or help it along by giving a good, a good feed, reduce the nitrogen levels, build, build a calcium and potash in the soil. You know what I'm going to say, black grid and all that stuff. And that will help your tree. Not now, it's a bit too late for these trees, but it's not too late for your vegetable garden and your flowering bed. So if your tree isn't flowering yet, and you're expecting it to, and the other one has already, putting black grit today is not going to push it on quicker, but next time around it will, definitely. But all your annual plants and all your vegetables and flowering plants, definitely feed them as often as you need to, to get the flowers to develop a lot quicker, because they are a fast cycling plant. Last one, our plum tree. Double plum, double grafted that is. One side's blooming beautifully, this one not as much. We have still got some flowers. I've given it a good prune, so it's the first cycle where it's had its good prune. I still got to bring it back down a bit more because it's already shot up too much. So next year we will get a better flowering cycle on this side so they can help each other in pollinating. And we will get fruit on the other side because we have got enough flowers on both sides. The bees are out because you know what happened to my face. It's always back to normal, folks. <laughs> oh, so good to have it back. Oh, anyway, just a moment there for me to re re reminisce. Okay, so our Granny Smith about to burst out crazy. Too, <laughs> I know I've got too many fruit bearing spurs on here. I'm out of control with it. I just love it. I love seeing a thousand apples on the tree. Codling moth, get ready for it. There is a cycle. This is our other sundowner, I think it is, apple. This is going to burst out beautifully as well. We've got lots of, and we get a, a we get a ton of it, literally a ton of it. And the last thing, bird netting. We said the bird netting for Victoria, you can't use the old 10 mil and 15 mil. I've got it there on the ground, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not going to put it over the top of this. But we're also going to talk about how to reshape it. So we're going to show you how to build a frame and talk about the wildlife bird netting, which is wildlife friendly, the 5 mil opening available on our website. So if you're using 10 mil, 15 mil, there is a hefty fine on that if you get caught using it. Look, if, if you have got it in your own backyard and you know how to contain it, look, I'm not condoning you to use it because it is against the law in Victoria. In other states, you can use it, but never drape it over. Even the five mil, don't just drape it over, let it hang loosely. You need to keep it nice and tight and build a frame so that the tree itself doesn't have its branches piercing through the netting and getting tangled up, because that doesn't work either. So we'll talk about how to build it. And if you need some netting, the wildlife friendly bird netting is available on our website, five meters and 10 meter width. Um, and length as well, and you can buy it by the meter as well. Codling moths, I can't stress how important it is to actually prepare yourself to protect your trees. So use CGWS spray and the codling moth traps that you hang in the tree. So those two together combined will give you a, a great uh, defense against the problem. Also a tree band around the base. So we'll do that in another segment. In the meantime, get yourself ready for spring. And if your flowers are coming out on your blooming beauties, that's your fruit trees, sit back and enjoy. And our sale still go, is still going on, folks. Our spring into the garden sale, up to 70% off everything online. So you can enjoy some great products at discounted prices and have a wonderful garden just like me. Oh, it's not too bad, isn't it? But I see.